So welcome everybody to this latest video on 162 Math and in this video we'll be continuing with the theme of equations of a circle with a focus on working through some exam revision questions. Now as always there'll be a copy of the questions in the description below for you to download and have an attempt at either before watching this video or while watching this video and going through the answers. So before we get started working through some revision questions based around the equation of a circle, let's just review some of the important formulas that you need to know that will certainly make your life a little bit easier when encountering such questions. Now, some of these formulas are given and more prominently used more at a higher level. So, for example, if you're studying level two further maths or A level. However, if you were to use them in a GCSE exam, you would still get full marks purely because they are valid mathematical methods. But just be aware that, again, based on who's been teaching you, you may not have been introduced to these formulas. Now, let's just have a look at the first one. So the first equation here of x squared plus y squared equals r squared is, in fact, the equation of a circle with center at the origin and a radius of r. Now this second formula is basically the equation of a circle with center ab and radius r. So that's why it's just slightly different because obviously then if you substitute a and b equals zero into that formula you would then end up with x squared plus y squared equals r squared. The next question involves working out the gradient between two points. So this here is the gradient between two points, which may be used for when you are looking at tangents or when you're looking at the gradient between two points in terms of going through the center and the radius, etc. Midpoints, again, could be a point where you're looking at the midpoint between two coordinates. So let me just change the color for that. So this here is the midpoint between two coordinates, which may be useful when finding out the radius of a circle from a diagram. If you've got two points and you want to try and find which is in the middle, then there you go. And the last two formulas are basically the equations of a straight line. Now you can use either of these. So you tend to use this formula here when you know so use when you know the gradient, which is m, and the y-intercept, which is c. And you can use this formula here when you, so use when you know the gradient, which is m, and a coordinate that the line that lies on the line that you're trying to find so that's going to be x1 y1 and either of those two equations will give you when you substitute the relevant values into that will give you the equation of a line so let's have a look at and get started on some example questions so looking at question one it says the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals nine work out the length of the diameter so from this, what you need to do is recognize that the equation of a line, a circle rather, is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So r squared equals 9, so r is going to equal 3. Now you might be tempted to write plus or minus 3 because obviously you're reversing a square. But again, because this represents a length, you can't have negative length. So if the radius is 3, then the diameter is going to be 6. Moving on to question two, it says work out the diameter of the circle. So again, very, very similar here. So here, r squared is equal to 64. So r is going to equal 8. So therefore, the diameter is going to be 16. The next question then says the a circle has the equation of x squared plus y squared equals a quarter. Work out the length of its radius. So r squared again equals a quarter. So r equals the square root of a quarter which is going to be the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. So it's going to be a half, which is our fourth option. Moving on to question 4, it says that the 
a circle has the equation of x squared plus y squared equals 4, work out the length of its radius. So again, r squared equals 4, so r equals 2, which is my first option. Moving on to question 5, it says that a circle with centre O passes through 5, 0. What is the equation of the circle? So here, if it passes through this, as you can see from this circle that the radius is 5. So therefore, r squared is going to be 5 squared, which is 25. So in the equation of that circle with at the centre of at the origin is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 25, which is our first option. Moving on to question six, it says, what is the equation of a circle with center zero, zero and a diameter of six units? Well, if the diameter equals six, that means that the radius is going to be three and R squared is going to be nine. So then I'm, it's going to be the third option. For B, it says, which of these points lie on the circumference of the circle? Circle your answer. Now for this, what you want to do is substitute the X and Y ord coordinate and see if it equals 25. So for example, if I do three squared, that's going to be nine plus four squared, which is 16. That's going to give me 25. So there is one. There is my answer straight away. Now I could try it with all the others. So 6.25 squared gives me 39. Well, that's not going to work. So that's definitely not it. Here I've got 81 plus 256. And that's not going to work. Um, here I'm going to have 1 squared. Minus 1 squared is 1. 12 squared is 144. And again, add those together. It's not going to work. So here the correct answer is the first one. See, it says circle true or false for each statement. It says that the center of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25 is 0, 0. And that is true. It says that the equation of the tangent to the circle x squared plus y squared equals 25 at the point 5, 0 is y equals 5. Well, for this, let's just do a little sketch. So... If I do a poorly set of axes and draw my circle, now because the radius is 5, which is true, then this point here is 5, that's minus 5, that's going to be 5, and that's going to be minus 5. Now drawing y equals 5, that's going to be a horizontal line through here, and 5, 0 is there. So as you can see there, that the, the dot does not lie on the tangent, so that there is false. The next one says the, the equation of the circle has the equation of a straight line, can have either zero, one, or two solutions if solved simultaneously, and that is true. So a straight line can either intersect a circle either once, twice, or not at all. So the answer there is true. Moving on to question seven, it says that a circle with radius of three units has a center of seven, five, as shown. Work out the coordinates of any points that lie on the circumference of the circle. So let me just zoom out so we can see that in all its entirety. Now for this, as you can see that the radius is three units and this coordinate here is seven, five. Now, if the radius is three, it means that distance there is gonna be three. This distance here is gonna be three and this distance here is gonna be three and this distance here is gonna be three. So all I can then do is basically from this point here, that's going to be 5 take away 3, which is 2. So this coordinate here is going to be 7, 2. This point here is going to be 3 away from 7, which is 10. So that coordinate there is going to be 10, 5. This coordinate here is going to be 3 up from 5. So that's going to be 8. And that's in line. So it's going to be 7, 8. And this coordinate here is going to be 3 away from 7. So that's going to be at 4. So this point here is going to be 4. Five. And I would say any of those four coordinates are going to be probably the most popular ones that lie on the circumference. Moving on to question eight, it says P is minus one, one at is a point on the circle with center O and a radius of R. Work out the value of R. So for this, what we need to do is work out the distance of that red line so that red line represents the radius now this point here is at one and this point here is minus one 
So then what I can then do is use Pythagoras as if I turn it into a right angle triangle. So this distance here is one, that's one. So then using Pythagoras, I get one squared plus one squared equals R squared. So R equals, or well, R squared equals one plus one, which is two. So R equals the square root of two, which is our third option. Moving on to question nine, it says A, B, and C are points on a circle X squared plus Y squared equals 36 as shown. A is on the Y axis, B is on the X axis, and M is the midpoint of A, B. C, O, M is a straight line. Show that the coordinates of A is zero, six. So here we can see that from this, we've got a radius of six. So then, and six up, from the center, which is 0, 0.0, is going to be 0, 06. And that should be enough to get the one mark. For B, it says work out the coordinates of B. Well, if that's going to be 6, this distance here is also going to be 6. So this coordinate here is going to be 6, 0. Moving on to question C, it says show that the equation of the straight line passing through COM is Y equals X. Now, if we go back to the diagram, we can see that we've got two coordinates. So M is at 3, 3 and O is at 0, 0. So I can then work out the gradient of this line. So this is going to be 3, that's going to be 3. So the gradient of OM is going to be 3, the difference in y, which is 3, over the difference in x, and it's going to be positive, so it's going to be 1. So therefore then, using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, I'm going to use m equals 1, and I'm going to use the origin as my ordinates. So here, this is my x1 and this is my y1. So substituting those numbers in, I get y minus 0 equals 1x minus 0, which then leaves me with y equals x, which is what they wanted me to prove. Then moving on to question D, it says work out the coordinates of C. Now C intersects the line and the circle. Now the equation of the line as we've showed is y equals x and the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals 36. So what you want to do here is whenever you want to try and find any intersection points is substitute one equation into the other. So for this what I'm going to do is in the equation of a circle I'm going to substitute wherever I see an x I'm going to substitute a y sorry I'm going to swap it with an a y and x. Wherever I see a y, I'm going to swap it with x. So substituting in, I get x squared plus x squared equals 36. So 2x squared equals 18. So x squared, no, it doesn't, x, 2x squared equals 36. And x squared equals 18. So x equals the square root of 18, which in third form is root 9 times root 2, which is 3 root 2. Now here, this should be plus and minus, so that's going to be plus and minus. Now, because obviously C is in that quadrant where X is negative and Y is going to be negative, then that then means that the X ordinate is going to be minus 3 root 2, and the Y ordinate, because it lies on Y equals X, is also going to be minus 3 root 2. Moving on to question 10, it says, in this question, all lengths are in centimetres. A is a point on the circle with centre O. B is a point on a different circle with centre O. And AB is 20. And the question is asking us, the equation of the large circle is, and we've got x squared plus y squared equals 144. The radius of the smaller circle to the radius of the large circle is in the radius of 4 to 5. Work out the size of angle OB. Now, for this question, you are going to need to know, have some knowledge of 
using advanced trig where you're using trigonometry for non right angle triangles. So if you have not covered that, then this is going to be incredibly difficult for you to answer. So looking at this, what we know is, well, from start to looking at this particular question from the larger circle, we can see that the radius of the large circle is going to be 12. So OB is going to be 12. We've been told in the question that AB is 20. Now looking at this ratio here, so the radius of the smaller circle to the radius of the larger circle is in the radius of 4 to 5. Now if the radius of the larger circle is 12, then 5 parts equals 12. So then 1 part is going to be 12 over 5, which if I convert to a decimal, just because it might be relatively easier, that's going to equal 2.4. And then 4 parts is going to be 4 times 2.4, which gives me an answer of 9.6. So this distance here is 9.6. Now from this triangle, what I'm then going to do is I'm going to use the cosine rule to work out what the angle AOB is going to be. So let's just call that angle cos well, let's call it x actually and it's going to be b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc so from this i know that if i label the triangle so this is going to be my little a this is my b and this is my c so here a equals 20 b equals 96 and uh, 9.6 rather and c equals 12. So substitute the numbers in, I get cos x equals, and it's going to be 9.6 squared plus 12 squared minus 20 squared, all divided by 2 times 9.6 times uh, 20. Nope, 12. So typing that all into my calculator, and let's just do just that. So here, setting up my fraction, I've got 9.6 squared plus 12 squared minus 20 squared. Scroll to the bottom, then 2 times 9.6 times 12 equals, gives me minus 32 over 45. So minus 32 over 45 so inverse of that value equals x and as it's still saved on my calculator if I press shift cos then the previous answer close bracket gives me an answer of 135.3 to 1 decimal place so x equals 135.3 degrees to one decimal place. Now, does that answer look correct? Yes, because I'm expecting an obtuse angle. So there is my angle for AOB.